Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're so happy you have joined us today. It has been so cold here, as I know it has been in several parts of the country. So honestly, we have just been staying in. It actually is uncomfortable to go outside, but it's supposed to warm up as the week goes on. So that's good news. We hope this video finds you well. We have eight days left to our no spend January, and we will take this into February, but for February, we're going to do a low spend. So we will keep you updated on that and take you along as well. Today's video, we're going to be talking about five things you need to stop doing so that you can live below your means and use your money for things that are important to you and that will not break your budget. We're also going to get outside for just a little while, show you the beautiful birds, what's been going on in our area weather-wise, and we're also gonna be making a really spicy and sweet, delicious game day meal that you can use for any day. But we know Super Bowl's coming up and the playoffs are going on, so we wanted to share this with you as well. So sit back, relax, let's get right to this video. First thing we wanna do is just take you outside. It has been snowing on and off for several days. And as you know, part of our budget goes to feeding our local birds on our property. We give them seeds and suet throughout the winter. It's part of our budget and it brings us so much joy. I'm gonna show you what winter in the Northeast looks like. Here you go. Aren't the birds amazing? We had cardinals, we have the downy woodpecker, so many different species come and visit. The reason the pictures weren't great because I was filming through the window and we have to keep the screen up on our side window. Why? Because we are so careful that the birds don't fly into the glass of our window. So that's why the pictures, you can see the little squares of the screen. We do keep it there for the birds' safety. But at least you got an idea of how beautiful those birds are. We want to share with you five things that you really need to stop doing in order to live below your means. These are practical, these are essential, and we really hope you put them into play. These are just great ways to live below your means as far as spending money goes. Number one, you need to stop justifying your spending. What does that mean? A lot of times when we spend money that we know is not allocated to our budget, and is going to bust our budget for the month, for the week, for the day, we justify it. And that is something you have to be aware if you do it and try to really curb that. Justified spending is basically saying, well, I know this is going to bust my budget, but I deserve it. Or I really want this, and after I get it, I know I'll feel better. Or, oh, it's just, this one time I'm going to do it. That is justified spending. And you really have to be so careful of that. We cannot make excuses to spend extra money outside of our budget just because we tell ourselves we deserve it. It's only going to hurt our budget. It's only going to hurt the next day when we realize we did it and we didn't really want to. So please be aware and try not to partake in justified spending. Number two is letting others dictate where our money goes and blow 
our budget. Almost like adult peer pressure. And I know I had a couple of you ask me how to handle something like this. What happens is people will put pressure on you to spend money. Money you may not have, money outside of your budget, or money that you just really don't want to spend because you want to spend it on something else. Somebody asks you to go to dinner. You really don't want to. You know it's going to break the budget and you really would like to use that money for something else. Come up with a wonderful way to say no gently and kindly. I just can't do it right now, but I so appreciate you thinking of me and trying to include me. But honestly, no for right now. That's it, cut dry and move on. Your money is your money and nobody should tell you how and when to spend it. Number three, another great way to break that budget is not realizing how much you're actually spending as you spend. And this again is when that expense tracker comes in especially if you are charging or you are putting it on a debit card, you need to know how much money you are spending on a daily basis. You need to realize how much you're spending so that you can continue to live below your means. Track your spending. Number four, plain and simple, not having a budget. And this kind of ties in to number three. You need to know what is coming in as far as revenue, as far as income. And you need to know what has to go out. And those are essential spends. Very, very important. Please set up a budget. Know how much you have coming in as far as finances. And then you can see what you can allot to go back out. Because if you don't have a budget, there is no way that many of us would be living below our means. You really have to set up a good, easy budget. And I will link a video down below on exactly how to do that. And number five, another way to blow the budget and live above your means is to continue to spend on impulse purchases. Impulse purchases are so easy to spend on because they give us instant gratification. We see something, it sparks joy for a minute, we want it, we buy it. And impulse spending is actually very easy to combat if you stop and wait. Just give yourself 48 hours to think about that purchase that you're going to buy and then see if you still want it. Does it spark as much joy that it did two days ago? Because our emotions run up, run down, our moods change. We might be hungry, we might be thirsty, we might be tired. I know this sounds silly, but these are real ways that impulse spends make us feel better. And you really have to realize that no matter what you buy, happiness is going to come from within. Those impulse buys may give you a day or two of happiness once you get them. But then I guarantee if it was an impulsive spend, that happiness will not last. So we hope these five things that you need to really be aware of and try to curb was inspiring and helpful. These are just simple things that you can do to help you live below your means. And when we live below our means, we get to spend money on things that are truly important to us. What we wanna do now is get into the kitchen. We wanna create with you this sticky, sweet, hot, spicy, delicious chicken wing recipe. We showed you this a while back and we showed you how to make it on the grill outside. But being that there is no grilling going on now, we are going to show you how to make it in the oven with simple ingredients we guarantee you have in your home. We're gonna get into the kitchen and this is a fun Sunday afternoon, Saturday night treat. Here you go. So if you remember back a couple of months, we purchased a couple packages of chicken wings when they were on sale for $1.99 a pound. And we put those in the freezer for just an event like now. It's 14 degrees outside. If you hear a noise running, 
in the background that's our wood stove fan blowing so I can't turn that off because it's too darn cold. Anyway, here are the wings. I just defrosted them, washed them. So now I'm just gonna separate the wings and the tips. I'm gonna start by cutting off the wing tips and then cutting the wing into two pieces. The wing tips are gonna be used in a broth that Emmy makes, a homemade chicken stock. So that's a great way. Don't throw those out. That's good stuff right there. So basically I just take the wing and I find the joint and I cut the tip off. Same thing with separating the wing into two pieces. Just cut down in the V and that's it. I'm going to continue doing this with the rest of the wings. By the way, they're going in a bowl. Emmy's going to be making an incredible marinade for these. They're sweet, they're spicy. Just wait for that to come up. What a great recipe. Fun, simple, and frugal. Here are the chicken wing segments that Paul cut up for me. It's about four and a half pounds. We just blotted them dry. Now I'm going to set them aside for a minute. In this pan, we have a quarter cup of melted butter and it's cooled. We're going to be using Louisiana brand hot sauce, but any kind of hot sauce you want. Anywhere from a half a cup to three quarters of a cup. We like this Louisiana brand because all it has is aged peppers, distilled vinegar, and salt. So anytime you can get a pure product, that's always good. So we're putting that in. For the next ingredient, we're using pure maple syrup, but you can definitely use honey if you would like. So we're gonna add about a half a cup of this as well. Look at how much is in there. Always scrape what you're putting ingredients in. We're literally going to put just a dash of cayenne. It calls for a half a teaspoon in the original recipe, which I will link down below, but you do that according to taste. I don't know, about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm gonna give this a good whisk, and then I'm gonna take it over to the stove, and I'm going to heat it for about 10 minutes. Why am I doing that? You want these flavors to cook together. So we gently simmered this for about 10 minutes. You can see how beautifully it came together. Now we're gonna let it cool a bit before we pour it over the chicken. So the hot sauce cooled, we just tasted it. Be careful of that cayenne pepper. Seriously, it's hot. <laughs> so I put about three quarters of our mixture on here and I'm just pouring it over the chicken and we're gonna coat it. I'm leaving a little extra so that we can baste it after it cooks a while. Keeping the extra sauce separate because we don't want to contaminate it with the raw chicken. Then we're going to put them in the refrigerator for several hours to marinate. Make sure you put it in the refrigerator while it's marinating. So we let the chicken marinate. I don't know. It's been about an hour, an hour and a half or so. What I did was take a rimmed cookie sheet. Make sure it has a rim on it. I'm gonna take one of my butter wrappers and I'm just gonna grease the foil. And now I'm gonna just take the chicken and as I'm doing this, I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees. So here we go. We're going to put it in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. Then what we'll do after the 40 minutes is increase the temperature a little bit. To make These just cooked 40 minutes at 350 degrees. I'm just gonna flip each of these over. So we flipped all the chicken. Remember that wonderful marinade we made earlier? Well, I just took it out of the refrigerator, heated it. Now we're gonna brush the chicken with it. Each piece is getting a generous coating. Now our oven was on 350. We're going to up it up to 400. We're going to put the chicken back in the oven for just about 10 minutes, but keep an eye on it. After these cooked for 10 minutes at 400, I stuck them under the broiler for just a minute look at these now you can see why i used the tin foil cleanup will be that much easier the internal temperature has to be over 165 degrees this chicken smells 
really delicious. We are gonna let this cool a minute, plate it up. Just make sure if you do wanna broil them, don't do it in a glass pan. This looks so good. Look at this, we just paired it with a simple green salad, cucumbers, lettuce, carrots, olives. What a wonderful, easy, light dinner. Perfect for a Sunday afternoon. I give those the two thumbs up, 10 finger go-to. Anything you wanna add about those wings, Paul? They were just awesome. They were fun. They were sticky. They were sweet. They were tangy. I love chicken wings. You know, it's probably because I'm from Buffalo, but <laughs> they're, they're really good. They're really good. You got to try them. They were very easy to make, minimal time, and they just came out so well. We're going to put the original recipe down below where we got the idea. We tweaked it a little bit because we wanted to be able to cook it in the oven. So good. I just want to clarify this. You don't have to melt the butter first. Just put the quarter cup of butter in the pot with the other ingredients and cook them all together for 10 minutes. Why I melted the butter first, still a mystery. So there you go, we keep it real. The question of the day, what is something that you consider a budget buster? Something that can hinder you living below your means? And it doesn't have to be something you personally do, not at all. It just is something that you realize would not be good for your budget if you did it. So please share that down below with us. It not only encourages us and we get those aha moments, but our viewers do as well. And we thank you so much when you all share your comments with us. We ask that you please take a minute and give this video a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't come on in we would love to have you be part of our family we ask you to be well we ask you to be safe and above all we wish you blessings until our next video may god greatly bless you